and welcome back. The end goal of the network is to have it function, have it work. So a user, if they're sitting at their computer at a browser, for example, and they want to see a web page, they just want to see the web page. <laughs> or if they're doing a real-time audio or video call, they just want it to work. Now, the devices on the network have their responsibilities in forwarding the data to the right locations, and they all don't do it the same. So for example, if we had a building and we had one person at the building, we said, okay, um, we want you to sort people based on the color of their eyes. Or another person, we said, we want you to sort people and forward people into the building based on the type of shoes they're wearing, or if they're wearing sandals or shoes. Those are examples of making decisions based on different factors regarding allowing people or sorting people as they go into the building. So in networks, we have that same type of consideration. Different networking devices, like routers versus switches and so forth, make forwarding decisions based on different information that they are looking at. So what are those decisions? What are they considering? And that's what we're going to start looking at right now. And I'm going to take you back in the time machine just for a moment to a couple decades ago when Ethernet networking was fairly new and we had something called a hub. And let's go ahead and imagine we have this hub and let's go ahead and put eight ports on this hub. And then we'll use some blue unshielded twisted pair cables to connect some clients here. And for our clients, we'll go ahead and draw them here. This is client one and client two all the way through eight. Actually, I'm going to stop short of that because we probably want to have a router in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a router so that devices on this local network, if they ever need to get out to other networks, they can forward their data over to the router who can make a routing decision and forward the traffic onto other points, including things like the internet. So regarding this hub, each of these ports was like a repeater, like monkey see, monkey do. So if device five is sending data into the network on this port, we'll call that port number eight, this hub would simply repeat all the bits, all the information it sees out every other port. Also, if device one sent data into the network on port one, the hub would forward that to all the other ports, two through eight. And if device four sent any data in on port four, the hub would forward that data to all other ports. So there'd be an example in the TCP IP protocol stack of a device, this hub in this case, that's operating down here at layer one. Think of layer one, like not, <laughs> not too smart. It's cables and signals. And a repeater, which is simply taking bits that come in and forwarding it up to every other port, is making forwarding decisions based on monkey see, monkey do. It's just repeating the signals on all the other ports. It's not looking at any type of addresses or logic. It's simply forwarding the data. And that's why a hub is often referred to as a physical layer or a layer one device in the TCP IP protocol suite that we know and love today. So layer one deals with signals and cables and other physical characteristics including simply repeating those signals blindly on every other port. So that is one example of how we can forward users' data is simply have a device like a Layer 1 hub that simply repeats it. Now, unfortunately, that's not very efficient because what if device 6 is having a conversation or sending packets to device 5? Or what if device 1 is sending data that's intended for the router? Basically, if the traffic only needs to go here to here between device 1 and the router, we are basically wasting the time of all of these other devices because the repeater is forwarding that traffic coming in on port one to all the other ports, not just the port that the router is connected to. So it's not very efficient by just blindly forwarding all the traffic to all the other ports. However, in the case of a layer one device, a hub, that's exactly what is happening. So is there something better? Is there something that could be more intelligent about how it forwards inside of a network? And the answer is yes. And that is a layer two type of device. And that, my friend, is exactly what we're going to chat about in the very next video. So I'll see you in the next video as we take a look at layer two forwarding and the devices who do exactly that. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.